Bismillah, Ibn al-Shaytan, Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Nawaitul Arba'in, Nawaitul Atikaf, Nawaitul Khalwa, Nawaitul Uzda, Nawaitul Riyadha, Nawaitul Suluk, Lillahi Ta'ala Al-Azim, Fi Hadal Masjid, Ati'u Allah, Wa Ati'u Rasul, Wa Ati'u Amri Minkum. As a, as a continuation of what we said in the previous session, Awliyaullah are like a like a ring like a ring in the middle of the desert. It's very difficult to find a ring when that ring is being in the middle of the desert. Wherever you watch, wherever you look you don't find that ring. If you find that ring, you will be lucky. Awliya Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them and made them rare. Not everyone that we see in or encounter in our life, you have to think that this is, oh, this is a wali, this is a murshid. Too many, whenever I travel, they tell me this is, let us go and meet this Murshid or that Murshid or that Murshid or that Murshid. Too many Murshids. Only by name. A Murshid is that, is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him guidance to guide people. There is Irshad, as we said many times before, there is Irshad, which is guidance, and there is Nasiha, which is advice. Anyone can give Nasiha, anyone can give an advice. I can give an advice, I say to you, oh, don't go to, uh, to that uh, jungle, there are a lot of snakes. You can give nasiha, any scholar can give nasiha. Say, go, don't go to the jungle, there are snakes. So what happened? You don't go to the jungle, there are snakes. But you need to move through that jungle to reach the other side. So what you need then? You need irshad, you need a guidance. Awliyaullah are guides whom are able to go through take you through difficulties, pass you from poisonous area that shaitan is already took, and cross you to the other side, to the safety side. So there is a big difference between someone who has been given authority or permission of irshad, guidance, and someone who has been given authority to give an advice. There are a lot of people that they are being given by Awliyaullah permission for zikr and, adv and advice. It's okay. But there are not many who has been given authority of guidance. Guidance is to take by your hand and cross you, cross with you through that jungle which full of wild animals. And they take you to the safety side. One time, I heard that story from Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, and Maulana Sheikh Nazim, may Allah give him long life, was translating and explaining that one day there was a poor man visiting, making Hajj, and he was standing by Kaaba, and out of sincerity and love, he was saying, Ya Rabbi, all these are your servants. Give me 
the power of Khidr alayhi salam, I make all of them rich. I make all of them happy. And, oh Allah, let me see Khidr, let me see Khidr that I can ask him to take from his power and make all these people happy. And suddenly one person appeared in front of him and he said, what you are asking? He said, I'm asking for Khidr alayhi salam to meet with him in order that take from him power to, to change these people, to make them happy. He said, Khidr, you have to look after him. He is not someone that you can find easily. But Khidr, if you want to know him, he can say to this mountain, move, and the mountain will move. And this man was looking and he was seeing the mountain moving. <laughs> but he didn't realize that this one was Khidr <laughs> <laughs> this is to show the sincerity and uh, we say fitra, purity. It's like a child. A wali become like a child who is on the on the journey of sainthood, who did not reach yet the level of perfection. He has to carry that that childish sincerity. Child is sincere. Is innocent. He thinks from an innocent way. He doesn't think from the realistic way. He takes everything in a good way. But for us, when we hear something, we begin to analyze it more. If we hear one word, we analyze it more than one book we put on it. Of doubtful why this man said it? Why he said that word? What behind it? What is the conspiracy out of it? Why he they say, it? oh, we never finished for one year th thinking what he said and what he meant with this word. But a wali who is going on the journey of Gnosticism, he is like a child surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't realize that this is Mahdi, uh, this is Khidr alayhi salam. Then he was standing there and that Khidr left. Another time, Ya Rabbi, next day, Ya Rabbi, let me see Khidr alayhi salam, let me see Khidr alayhi salam. So in order to ask him to give me power that I can make all these people happy. And so. Then next day, Khidr alayhi salam came. Because he's a wali, when a wali asks, when a wali who is on that way of Gnosticism even didn't reach the level of sainthood, but Allah will give him what he wants. That's why you, we come in the presence of awliya in order to ask them for help to pray for us for our difficulties. Like Sayyidina Zakaria, Allah mentioned him in Holy Quran. When he entered the niche of Virgin Mary, Virgin Mary, Islamically, there are two opinions. One the opinion, they say that she is a sincere, pious woman, mother of Sayyidina Isa. The other opinion, they say that she was being a prophet. But this is a very weak opinion. And she is the mother of Sayyidina Isa. So she was scholarly, she was a normal, sincere, pious woman. Whenever Say Sayyidina Zakaria comes to her niche, he sees food there. He asks her, Anna laki hadha, qalat huwa min indillah. From where you have that? She said, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent it to me. So what Zakaria did? When he saw the holiness of the place, Hunalika da'a Zakaria rabbah. When he saw the holiness of the place, he went back to that niche and asked Allah to give him a son. And Allah gave him Yahya. So means, Awliyaullah, their places, a prophet, Sayyidina Zakaria, going back to where 
Sayyidah Maryam, her niche, her, her, her worshipness place, worshipping place, asking Allah to give him a son. And Allah responded. Allah gave him what he asked. So Allah and his prophet. Allah on the way of Gnosticism, when they asked, Allah will give. Ad'uni astajib lakum. Ask me and I will answer you. I will give you what you're asking. So the next day Sayyidina al-Khadr came and, and he said, what you are looking for? He said, I'm looking for Khadr He said, I told you yesterday, Khadr is the one that can say to this mountain to move and it will move. He looked, he saw the mountain, he said, then you are Sayyidina al-Khadr. <laughs> He said, yeah, I am that one. He said, I caught you. Now you cannot run away. <laughs> How are to run? He's been ordered to come to this man. So he said to him, I need you to get me all treasure of dunya. All gold that you have. I want to make all these people happy. So I will distribute the gold to them, the money to them. Sayyidina al-Khidr said, no problem. I will get whatever you want. Take this big bag full of gold. It will never empty. Whenever you pull your hand in it, sorry. Whenever you, pull, you put your hand in it, it has gold. And distribute who, to whom you like. So the man was so happy, he looked in the bag, all golden coins, jewels, everything in that bag, in that bag. He looked at Sayyidina al-Khidr and he said, now you made me happy, I'm so lucky that I'm going to make all these people happy, then Allah will be happy because his servants are happy. And Sayyidina al-Khidr said, oh, one second, I have to give you my turban. You are going to wear it. And after you wear it, then you distribute the money, it will be more barakah. He took the turban of Khidr salam, and he put it on his head. It is said that al in Tijan al-Arab, turbans are the crowns of Arabs, means of Muslims. Man wada'aha wada'ahu Allah. وَمَنْ أَعَزَّهَا أَعَزَّهُ اللَّهِ Who puts it down, Allah puts him down. Who raises it up on his head, Allah raises him. That's why it's very important to have turbans because barakah comes on it. Secret comes with it. Don't say, I am putting a turban for what? I don't need it. I go in Europe, I will put a hat easy, where I have, or in America or Western countries, I put a turban, everyone look at me strange. Only we put it like a movie theater. When we go to the movie theater, like actors, we put the turban. When we are out of the movie theater, we throw the turban. It's not a movie theater in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So turbans, they have secrets. As soon as Sayyidina al-Khidr put on his head the turban, was looking at Kaaba, all these men changed. There is no man anymore. There is no human being. All what he was seeing, wild animals. <coughs> wild animals. Tigers, lions, snakes, uh, scorpions. Uh, what you say, this big animal, they come from their mouth of fire. Dragon. Dragons, crocodiles, uh, <laughs> all kinds of uh, wild animals are there. I look, looking, looking, where to give the money now? <laughs> there is no way to give you this one, that one, that one, that one. There is no any more anyone that deserves to take money. Deserve to make, to be happy. And the Khidr alayhi salam 
look at him and he looked at Khidr and he said to Khidr I didn't find any man anymore except you so you take that money be happy he said oh my brother I don't need that money I brought that money because you requested that money oh my brother you are on the way of sainthood you are going to see a lot of that these wild animals are this dunya and people are in this dunya fighting as wild animals against their beliefs it is the character of the ego ego is that the ego Allah is showing you the ego of human beings because their bodies are honored Allah honored Bani Adam Allah said in Holy Quran I have honored human beings but this is the ego the selfishness the egoism the 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 psychological product of shaitan and egoism in the inside the heart that it is making you to see these wild animals awliyaullah allah gave them power as i said they are rare like rings in a desert we are lucky to found that wali I cannot say a wali, I say that specially one, that one, special one, because there are 124,000 walis. But that wali is important. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us and guided us Amen. in order that He will take that wild characteristics away from us and present us. To Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as fully uh, in the level of servanthood. Think then, me and everyone, when he is looking, that while he is looking at us, and what he is seeing, if that beginner in the way of Gnosticism, he was seeing with the hat, turban of Sayyidina Khidr السلام, was seeing all these wild animals in front of him around Kaaba what you expect that Mawlana Sheikh Nazim may Allah give him a long life when he is looking at us what he is seeing <laughs> yeah, well, of course yeah, well, my, what's your well, in Arabic Ali, in English <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Goodness gracious. <laughs> what goodness gracious? Badness gracious. <laughs> we are in a trouble. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. We are in big trouble, in big pain. Big pain. Not pain for us. Pain for him also. He's ashamed of such students. Is that how smart? Yes. <laughs> That's why he said, I heard it many times from Mawlana Sheikh Nazim and Grand Sheikh. He said, لا تخجلوني أمام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Don't get me ashamed in the presence of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. This wild characteristics in us is dangerous. Especially, and I don't like to say it, but I, 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 it happens sometime and I, I, and unfortunately, these uh, these tapes takes everything. <laughs> Cannot hide anything. In America, one person came to me, and he said that my son has been abused. Hara, uh, so, so. Harassed? harassed, sexually harassed, assaulted, assaulted, mm -hmm. sexually assaulted. And the boy was like around 12 years or 14 years, you remember that story? 12, 13 years was, was assaulted sexually. S forget about sins. You, our sins or your sins or whatever, we are not going to give an excuse to ourselves. But forget about sins that we commit every day. 
and think about this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not test it, not to test us. Came and crying that boy, I don't want to go to that class. I don't want to go to that class. His parents came to me and they said, he doesn't want to go to, the, to, the, to that class because the teacher is harassing him. It's bad. And I said, okay, don't send him. He said, it's not that we don't send him, is that we are worried that he is going to harass someone else. I said, it's not really your responsibility, it's the responsibility of that person. He said, no, we are worried. We'll go to the police. I said, what's the benefit? They said, we have to go to the police and we have to tell the police what is happening. I said, okay, wait for one, one second. Which school? They said, no, 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 it's not the school. It's not the public school. It's not a private school. It's Quranic school. And the Imam is uh, oh, he teaching uh, his, his, uh, Quran. He was assaulting these children. Imagine how much sin we are falling into it and using different ways in order to affect our wild characters and wild behaviors. How much awliyaullah are carrying from their students on themselves in order to go to Prophet وسلم, and present their followers clean. Is a shameful situation that we are in today and people are in today um, in falling into these such difficult and big sins. So Wali, his responsibility is to carry from his murid. So I said, please, don't go to and report because it's bad for the Muslims, for the Muslim community. It's bad for the name of the teacher of that person. Alhamdulillah, he was not a, a murid. So we are facing such problems, such wild uh, characters and asking Allah that not to put us in that, that position because that is a shameful position you don't know when shaitan plays with us shaitan was able to play with Sayyidina Adam salam in paradise don't say oh I'm safe no 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 one is safe say Ya Rabbi forgive that person and may Allah makes me to by, by forgiving might be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save me and save my children so the shaykh is saying that oh oh that one la tatasaddar al majalis don't sit at the head of the table giving lectures or advice when you are yourself sick into this kind of wild characteristics that is dangerous and that's why I said there is a great difference between advice and irshad advice unbeliever can give advice the worst the sinful Muslim can give an advice he knows what is correct, what is wrong. He can say to you, don't drink. He's not. And he drinks. He can say to you, don't womanize. And he womanize. It's an advice. You like to listen, listen. They said there is one Arabic... From where, where you learned Adab, they said, how you learned Adab? He said, I learned it from the one who has no Adab. 
I looked at him, I learned it. So if a bad person, no adab with him, tells you don't drink, then it's an advice. So a big difference between advice and irshad, guide. As we said, the guide will take you through that jungle of wild characteristics and present you to Prophet Wasallam clean. That is irshad. Not everyone can have that characteristics. There are many people can sit and give lectures, advice, student of Mawlana Sheikh, but there are not those who can give irshad, give guidance and take their followers, their, the students up through the jungle and give, present them to the Sheikh, Sheikh present them to Prophet Wasallam. So Mawlana Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, and uh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, may Allah give him long life. He said, إذا كان مرض الشيخ هو الكبرياء وهو يرى نفسه أنه أحسن الكل وأعلى الكل فإن هذا المرض سيسري للجماعة جميعا. He said, don't sit in an association of someone who pretend to be, to be a leader when he is carrying the sickness of arrogance and pride in his heart because that sickness, that poison is going to go through your heart. He is giving, a, that's why Maulana, Maulana doesn't authorize people to give lecture. He say to people give, make zikr. That's it. And people, they have to know that they have no right to give lecture. And they have to tell their student, if we are giving you lecture, we are giving you from Sheikh's notes. It's not our words, it's his words. Because he said, as we just read now, he said he cannot be a sheikh who has sicknesses of arrogance and pride in himself. He cannot sit and give advice to people because that sickness will go through, it will reflect through everyone sitting there. That is danger. And today how many they sit in the head of the tables, chairs and giving lectures to the, to the others in order for the other to listen. How much poison are going through the hearts of students? Go to different countries. Might be you did not travel. I traveled everywhere. You can see those who have been uh, uh, proclaimed to be sheikhs and to are carrying the khilafah from Maulana Sheikh, giving lectures here and giving lectures that what kind of sickness is going through their hearts? But, we have to know, the students who are listening are not going to be responsible because they are coming with a pure heart. Because they believe that this person is Khalifa of Sheikh, as he is proclaimed. So they come with an open heart so there is no responsibility on them. The responsibility will fall on that Sheikh who is pretending to be the representative. That's why it's better to be a student, not to be a sheikh. For what I have to be, for example, anyone? To be a sheikh and be responsible. Shepherd is responsible toward his boss. Sheep are not responsible. Sheep, the sheep always grazing. We like to always eat. <laughs> Nothing else but uh, Maulana opened his house, his zawiya, his darga. People to come and eat Sarkan. Hajj Osman is easier. We eat, we eat, we eat, we graze, and no responsibility. Let the shepherd be responsible. Let someone else be responsible. He will be he will be responsible in front of Maulana Shah. It's not easy. Responsibility is not easy. The Sheikh will give you, will, it's like, you know, the, the well and the bucket. 
if we keep rolling down, rolling down the rope, going down, going, there is no water in the, in the well. He'll give, it, give the, the rope to you as much as you like to go until you, f you reach a dead end. You realize that you are nothing. Then he pulls you back. Come now. They are very patient. There is big difference between patience and between uh, rida, satisfaction. Between satisfaction and patience. Which is higher? Patience or satisfaction? Satisfaction is more higher than patience. We'll explain that next time. But the Sheikh is, is warning us through his notes. He's saying, don't, don't try to sit in an audience where there is darkness from that teacher who is giving this, uh, what's giving, the advice or the lecture. He said, and this is big, he is saying, Maulana Sheikh Nazim is, I'm quoting him. He said, Yaqulu Maulana, Uridu an ahruba ila makanin la yujad fihi Allah Azza wa He said, I like to run to a place that there is no Allah in it. Or means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not, not looking in it. I hide myself. Why? He said, Hayaan min Allah. Ashamed? Ashamed, embarrassed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah is going to look at me if I have arrogance? And he said, Al kibriya lillah wal azamatu lillah. Azama is for Allah, pride is for Allah. How I'm going to appear in a place where I have a pride in myself and think myself as being this or that or that. That is the sickness that we are in. Oh, not Maulana Sheikh, but we are in. Every one of us has a sickness, has a pride in himself. Might be of, of different kinds. This one wants to be this, that one wants to be that, that one wants to be that. No one is swimming in the ocean of peacefulness, submission. We want to come out and show our existence. When Allah asked, as Grand Sheikh said, in Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj, He asked Prophet ﷺ in the level of Kaaba Qawsayni Aw Adna, He said, He said, Sufni ya Rasulullah, Sufni ya Habibi. He said, La yasifuka al wasifun. Where he was able to see as Imam Nawawi said that he, he saw his Lord with, his, with the eyes of the head. Means physically he saw. He said, La yasifuka al wasifun. No one can describe. Then when he, Allah asked, Who are you then? Prophet ﷺ didn't see any existence for himself. He said, Ya Rabbi, there is no one. You, you are there. I'm not here. I'm nothing. Kul innama ana basharum mithlikum yu'ha ilay. I'm not only, a, I am only a human being like you, but revealed to me. Out of humbleness. So awliya Allah, they inherit. They are worried to show any pride. Because then they are responsible. They will be whipped. So how many times we are falling into this sickness of carrying pride wherever we go and say we are this and we are that. Maulana doesn't like that. One time Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani asked his murid, I, he said, I want you to slaughter a, a rooster in a place that no one can see you. They left. In the morning after Fajr, everyone with a rooster. And they came at night, all of them, they, read, they slaughtered the rooster. And they presented it to Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. Except one. He didn't come. Next day he didn't come. Next day he didn't come. 
And Sayyidina Abu Qadr Jilani sent someone to look after him and they found him running in the desert. They said, what you are doing? He said, I am looking for a place that there is no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no my shaykh. Wherever I go, I am seeing Allah is there, Prophet is there, and my shaykh is there. How am I going to slaughter the rooster? And where we are running? He can see every single action we are doing. So how we are coming to him and holding his hand, right and left, when our hearts are not clean? It's a problem. I am in it and everyone in it. And every representative in it. We must be very careful in order to save ourselves. <laughs> As that one with Imam Sayyidina al-Khidr, when he put the turban of Sayyidina al-Khidr, he saw there is only wild, wild animals, characteristic of wild animals. He said, I would have a run away to a place where I don't find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there until I die. Because I am ashamed of my Lord. Of myself, I'm sorry. I'm ashamed on for of myself in, before my Lord because I will be responsible. Can we make an account of ourselves today and sit by ourselves today by everyone by himself and think? Does he have pride or not? Or arrogance or not? If he found that there is arrogance, there is pride, there is sin, let us forgive and let us ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say to my servant, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those, those who were oppressed to themselves, don't lose hope of Allah's forgiveness. Allah will forgive all sins. We are coming here in order to find a way of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are asking our Shaykh to present us to Prophet clean and we are asking Prophet وسلم, to present to Allah, us to Allah clean. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi fatiha We continue next time inshaAllah. Bi fatiha So you want